What's up YouTube? Back at it again with another video of Tony's Coyote Swap New Edge GT. If you haven't checked out the first video, check that out as I follow along as we dyno the car. Got a custom tune put in it. The car made killer numbers. It's a home built Gen 1 motor with bolt-ons. It's a budget build. Tony did it all himself and the car made killer numbers. But you know what? It's not just about the peak numbers. In fact, this car is going to go much faster than you would think based on its peak numbers. But today, Today we're all about butt dinos and internet glory. Glory. No, really though. Today, I'm gonna show you six tips you can do at home with nothing more than a dino graph and a camera so you can be better prepared to run your best times at the track. Yeah! <laughs> Why would you wanna do this instead of just showing up and sending it? Well, if you're like us, it's a long drive of the track and even on testing two nights, it seems like we only get a handful of runs. So we try and do as much prep work in advance before even setting foot on the track to basically, hopefully, ensure we run as fast as we can as little amount of passes as possible, which saves unnecessary wear and tear on the car and hopefully minimizes the chances of breaking something. What are these six tips? I'm gonna show you how to interpret your dyno graph to understand how peak power, power after peak, shift RPM, and shift recovery all come into play when trying to squeeze out the most out of your given combo at the drag strip. In other words, I'm gonna show you how to pick the best shift points, but as you'll see, due to the internal ratios of the transmission and the shape of the power curve, not all gears have to be the same shift point. Why? Because of something called shift recovery, which is basically the RPM your motor falls down to on the shift. For instance, a tight ratio transmission might only fall about 1000 RPM or even less on a shift, but a wide ratio trans can have your car falling 2000 or more RPM between shifts, which means the shift points for each of these transmissions, even if it's on the same motor combo, is gonna be different because of the shift recovery RPM. Shift recovery varies with every combo and generally it also varies by gear. That's right, the same shift point doesn't have to be basically every single gear. And today, we're using a Coyote Swap New Edge Mustang GT as our test mule. Some people think you should shift right at peak power without remembering that every time you shift, you fall back down on the power curve and then have to fight your way back up to the next shift point. Conversely, some people think you should rev the motor out as far as you can go, which basically means that when you shift, you fall closer back down to peak power. Are either true in the case of our Coyote Swap New Edge GT? Let us dig in. First though, for reference, we're not gonna examine the shift recovery and shift points for every gear since we're gonna be doing basically all of this dyno dissection in order to maximize our results at the drag strip. I live my life a quarter mile at a time. And that means we're most concerned with first through fourth. And based on power, tire diameter, the rear gear ratio, which is a 410, the transmission ratios, and the weight of the car, we think the car will cross the stripe well into fourth gear. So for our case, no need to check shift points any higher than on the one to two, two to three, and three to four. Before we dive in, so I don't bore you with all these numbers during this entire video, I've peppered in a bunch of acceleration pulls, test hits, close calls with the cops, and a near wreck throughout the video to keep it interesting. All right, let's do this. Before we start selecting possible shift points, let's first just look at the dyno graph. Where's the peak power? Where's peak torque? And where does power fall off? In our case, this combo makes a peak of 432 horse at 6,500 RPM and a peak of 390 foot-pounds of torque at 4,475. With those peaks identified, let's take a closer look at the graph. Examining the power first, we know it peaks at 6,500, but what's awesome about this combo is power doesn't fall off a ton after peak. Instead, it holds within 5% of peak power from 65 all the way out to 75, which gives us a nice flat power curve where the car should continue to pull hard all the way up to the rev range. As for the torque, as to be expected with the NA Coyote, after the torque peak around 4475, torque continues to drop off the higher you rev it. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that because the power doesn't fall off after peak, we can rev the motor well past that power peak before shifting without sacrificing to acceleration. How far can we rev it before we start killing momentum? Let's find out. Based on the downer graph with peak power coming in at 6,500, as you know, but it holding nice and flat all the way out to 7,500, how the car feels under acceleration and the transmission ratios, we wanna pick a shift RPM. 
But in order to select the right shift RPM, we need to know what sort of power it's making at our desired shift points. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's compare how much power and torque it's making at 7,500 RPM and 7,800 RPM. So that's our 7,500 RPM and that's 7,800 RPM shift points. So first, let's just say that's right around 425 horse. So at 7,500 RPM, we're only about seven horsepower down of our peak power. So it's pretty good. How about torque? It is about 300 foot pounds, but the power is uh, pretty stable up top. So, and again, total bench racing here. This is literally just a photo of a dynograph, all right? So let's compare what these numbers look like at 7,800. We've actually dropped some power. Let's say the blue line is 425. Let's say this is maybe 415. Again, not a huge drop in horsepower revving it out uh, to 78. What's the torque look like at 78? Torque is falling considerably, right? So 300 foot-pounds is here. This is probably putting us 280 foot-pounds. Definitely falling off the torque peak. This is just simply looking at the power it makes at what we think we want to shift it at. Okay, so looking at power and torque at our desired shift points, clearly 7,500 RPM is the better choice because the motor is making more power and more torque at 7,500 RPM than it does at 7,800 RPM. Let's see what that looks like from the driver's seat. So based on step two, we think shifting the car at 7,500 RPM is best. But what does the shift recovery look like for each of these gears? Specifically, if we shift the car at 7,500 RPM on the one to two, two to three, and three to four, what RPM does the motor fall to on each of those shifts? Let's find out. This is a T56 car. It's a ProMotion built T56. We know that it has a 297 first. Uh, we don't know the rest of the ratios. The box just blew up, so when it's apart, we're gonna go ahead and count the ratios and figure out what it's got. On the one to two, when you shift at 7,500 RPM, it falls to 6,300 RPM. So not that big of a drop. That's kind of cool. All right, next up, on the three to four, I'm sorry, two to three, it falls all the way down to 5,600 RPM. And then also, on the three to four, it's gonna fall down to 5,600 RPM as well. So this is what I was saying now. So it's not just about basically like where it makes the most power, that's where you shift it. You also need to take into consideration that once you shift, the car basically falls out of the power band. So ultimately you'd love to be able to fall back like right around peak power, like ideally. But looking at these ratios, the three to four, and the two to three, that's gonna be pretty tough because you're gonna have to rev it way out. Thankfully though, like we talked about earlier, it's a pretty uh, solid flat power curve up here. So I think we're pretty good, but um, let's go ahead and show you uh, what that looks like. And as you can see, the one to two, not that big of a drop. Uh, the two to three and three to four, pretty big drop, you know, it doesn't seem to mind it too much, but in an ideal world, we would basically have a little bit closer ratios, um, or we'd maybe be able to make a little more top end power, but this is literally just a bolt on gen one motor. So anyways, we definitely know that we can improve top end power with some, uh, some parts changes. We already know the motor is making more power and torque at 7,500 RPM compared to 7,800 RPM. But does that still mean it's the right RPM to shift at? Just to be sure, we're gonna compare the shift recovery, power and torque on the one to two of 7,500 RPM shift versus 7,800 RPM shift. Boom. So at 6,300 RPM, power basically remains about at peak. That's good. So torque, torque is a little over 350 foot-pounds shifting at um, 7,500 RPM. So if we were to shift the car at 7,800 RPM on the one to two, power actually goes down a little bit, right? It's negligible, maybe five horsepower. Uh, torque does drop maybe 15 foot-pounds or so. So looking at this, it looks like shifting at the one to two at 7,500 RPM is gonna net us the most power and torque. All right, here's where things get interesting. Let's do the same 7,500 RPM shift recovery 
for 7,800 RPM shift recovery comparison, but now on the two to three and the three to four shifts. On the two to three and the three to four, assuming we are shifting at 7,500 RPM, we fall all the way down to 5,600 RPM. So what does that look like if we were to shift at 7,800 RPM? Well, here you go. So at 7,500 RPM, when we fall at shift and we fall all the way down to 5,600 RPM, we are making about a little over 400 wheel horsepower, all right? Assuming we shift at 7,800 RPM, the power actually jumps up to about 425 or so. How about torque though? So at a 7,500 RPM shift puts us say 360 foot pounds, right? As we know, because the torque falls off a lot, uh, your torque is definitely gonna be down another 10 foot pounds. So some might say that's where you should shift at. But there's one more thing we need to look at. Actually, you know what? Let's make a few pulls. All right, on the surface, shifting at 7,800 RPM on the two to three and the three to four might look best because it's shift recovery of 5,900 RPM as it making more power and nearly equal torque to a 7,500 RPM shift that drops us to 5,600 RPM. I'm not sure what to do with my hands. Uh, it'd be good just to hold them down by okay. your side. Yeah, great. Well, we're real happy with, um, with what was going on. Um, you know, you gotta be happy. But it's not that simple. It's never that simple. And for our next installment of number crunching, we're gonna look at Basically, the amount of time it takes to go from 7,500 to 7,800, because as we figured out, right, sometimes shifting higher puts you higher into the power band on the shift recovery, especially on the two to three and three to four, because it falls so greatly, right? But what we're not taking into consideration is how long it'll take us to get from 7,500 to 7,800 RPM, basically. Uh, weird, all right? Give me a break. Still getting the hang of all this editing stuff. Nonetheless, the Little Red Caterpillar is illustrating that how long it takes us to go from here to here, as I was saying. And so the higher the gear, the longer it's going to take. Why? Because the gears are longer. So the amount of speed you're going to get over this 300 RPM is going to take a lot longer. Simultaneously, what you're also up against is more basically the aerodynamic drag. So sometimes you're trying to wind this thing out to get that last 300 RPM just to put it back higher here on your next shift. Sometimes it's just not worth it. You're just falling off of a cliff here to make it up here when you're better off just to shift, climb back up the torque, and basically get going again. You're just falling off of a cliff. Initially, the RPM drop seems so fat on the two to three and three to four that we think you're gonna rev it out, but when you're in the car, the old butt dyno, is telling us that probably 7,500 RPM because it just literally falls off. All right, look, we're huge proponents of going to the track. It's just, it's safe. You know what? We will admit though that every once in a while when we get a new combo together, we got to try it out on the street. And while most of these test hits were definitely basically on a rural street, uh, a couple times we made a couple test hits and one of them, well, there was a bunch of police officers down at the end of the street, you know, and uh, I'll just let the video speak for itself. I'd be lying if I said uh, I wasn't there before. And honestly, most of you have probably been there too, checking your mirror 700 times after you got on it. Thankfully, he had already slowed down quite a bit. Nothing, you know, nothing happened. He was all good. All right, last bit of number crunching, I promise.
It's also good to know what is the difference between what the car is making at your shift RPM in regards to power and torque, and what is it making at the shift recovery RPMs, so that you know that on the shift, are you gaining power or are you losing power? Let's dig in. So as we know, on the one to two shift, shifting at 7,500 RPM, all gains, baby. We are actually increasing horsepower just a little bit, all right? The torque though, we had another 50 foot pounds of torque when we shift from the top of first gear, 7,500 RPM, down to second gear, right? What does that look like? Let's send it. All right, so in an ideal world, all gear ratios would be that tight, toit. Toit, like a tiger. For a Coyote, because that makes such high peak power, right? Um, as you can see, it basically rips second, up at 6,300, and you're off and running again, right? But, as we said, shifting at 7,500 on the 3 to 4 and the 2 to 3, pretty fat drop. This is what it looks like. Again, there's our power, and then boom. All right, so we actually say 425 horse. We drop down to 400 horse, so we drop about 25 horsepower. Really is still not that bad, you know? Um, that's still basically under 10%. So torque, though, right? Torque's 300 foot-pounds at 7,500 RPM, shifting shifting on the two to three and the three to four we pick up fat amount of torque 65 foot pounds of torque so um you know some of this torque uh might offset basically the horsepower drop ideally we'd have it a little bit tighter of a ratio but you know what this is what you get when you get a used uh, a used box so what's that look like send it <laughs> Next up, let's make a few pulls, not for these dumb numbers. Sounds good, huh? Those are shifting at 7,800 RPM, all right? And while Tony can definitely freaking row the gears, as a wise man once said, play it. exact reason why you do not send it you do not make test pulls on the street all right especially in a car with no abs panic braking without abs the wheels lock up and the vehicle goes out of control So thankfully nobody was hurt, but you know what? All the power got the best of us. So hope you guys enjoyed the content. There's much more to come on this car. What do you guys want to see with it? You guys want to see us keep it budget like it is? You guys want to see us add some boost, add some nitrous, auto swap it? What do you guys want to see? You know, definitely got some good stuff coming. Please like, comment, especially subscribe. That allows me to keep making the content for you guys. So yeah, much more to come.